Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, we thought today we would talk about something that we uh, saw in Microsoft's documentation for their Power BI Copilot, um, specifically a section in the documentation that talked about how you should get your data structured to be ready to really take advantage of LLMs and, and um, generative AI analytics, mm-hmm. specifically in Copilot, but I think this applies everywhere. And I thought we would take a few minutes and go through sort of their list and break down what these different things are for them. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. All right, so let's start at the top. What's the, what's the first thing you need to be thinking about? Well, it says table linking. So this is going to be like relationships between your tables, um, making sure that, first of all, you just have good um, good model set up, really. Yeah. Like it's, and, and by the way, we're in the Microsoft world, we're talking about a semantic model on top of the lake. Yeah, yeah. So basically okay. like your model in Power BI. What's so interesting about table linking and some of the other topics that we're going to get into is that um, this really all comes back to Kimball modeling, Kimball style modeling. It's, I mean, I think it's pretty impressive how well that um, that methodology has held. Yeah, yeah. has held. And, it, and, you know, maybe that's because tools have kind of been built around that methodology that's kind of held up. But um, even now, when we're talking about Copilot and this AI, this super futuristic thing, you know, it still wants to use. You still need that. Yeah. yeah relationships. Dimensional and, models. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, the next thing on their list was then standardized calculation logic. We talked about this a couple of episodes ago, um, specifically with the work you're doing internally with your team on building some LLM uh, uh, analytics stuff. Um, And this is really that you have defined clearly the calculation logic Mm -hmm. for the different type of metrics. So they give an example. Total sales calculated is the sum of sales amount from the sales table. Um, and some kind of a, a metadata and then matching DAX that, that is true to that definition. Yeah, right. I, I think what's so important about that is you, that you don't have total sales in one place and then you have total sales in another place. They have different definitions, different, right? right? Um, that's just kind of a general best practice data governance thing that you want to make sure you're on top of before, before getting into stuff like this. So, I mean, hopefully this would start uncovering some of those if you start sure going would. going through these and trying to yeah. make some changes, but uh, that would be really important. Yeah, yeah. Then another one that seems obvious, but naming conventions. I mean, we're really careful about our naming conventions here for column names uh, and, you know, in views and so on. Uh, but their example uh, would ask you to do something different from what we might do even now, like AVG rating for average rating. They would say – put average underscore customer underscore rating um, just to make it uh, much easier for the LLM to match up what the business users are asking for. Right. Um, I, I have a feeling in this example, the LLM would figure out what ABG rating is, yeah. <laughs> but it's a good point. Um, so, you know, some of the shortcuts that we're used to taking for the last however many years, um, we're going to have to get used to thinking about, all right, how do we make this easy to do a translation from what a business user is asking for to what the LLM is going to understand. Right, right. And I, I think that what's also kind of interesting about that is when you're thinking about doing that, either changing, let's say you do have AVG rating in a, you know, a customer analytics report, um, you can either, well, this is what's going to happen, well, for Power BI Copilot, I don't know how configurable it's going to be, but you could provide, you um, you know, the LLM with, you know, AVG rating means average customer rating, right? Basically synonyms. Yeah, basically synonyms. And that might be a lighter lift depending on your situation. So it's going to, you know, not all of these are, are going to be the, you know, the end all solution for, for getting this thing ready, but you know, they're still good. You're still going to have to be smart about, you know, making this happen. You are. Yeah. It's interesting. One of the first things that the Power BI co-pilot um, preview is doing is helping you create synonyms for the old Q&A functionality, yeah. which... That Q&A sucks. <laughs> yes, it hasn't been great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling it's about to get a lot better. All right. Another thing they talk about is having clear delineation of fact tables versus dimension tables. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's there's maybe two meanings to clear delineation. One is 
make sure you do your dimensional modeling well mm -hmm. um, so that you've been smart about what goes into a fact table and what goes into a, a dimension table, but also make it easy for the model or for the LLM to know what a table is. Right. Maybe something as simple as you put an F underscore in front of your fact tables and a D underscore in front of your dimension tables. Right, right, exactly. That's And that's just best practice dimensional modeling right there. So. Right. You know, Again. if you've been doing that, I think, but, you know, for us, we are forced to be pretty strict about some of these things, right? Because we're passing work between developers. We are hiring new people. Like, we have to have these things yeah. pretty well regimented. So it's kind of baked into our, our DNA. It's not uncommon for at other, you know, for someone that's kind of learning Power BI or learning BI just in general from the ground up to have a, a table um, called transactions that is a dimension, you yeah. know, and you just, and you have no, right. there's just no naming convention around it because they never learned it. Right. So, yeah. um, that's not going to be uncommon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one on here is hierarchies. So what are they talking about here? Uh, so this, it's kind of interesting. I don't really know why they, why you would want to have these in there. Like I can understand, um, maybe if you're trying to generate like a, a report, and maybe that's what they're getting at with for, the for drill down capability for drill down yeah. stuff, so that knows that you can that this is a logical way to to drill down into the data. Um, but the example they gave, I thought was it's not great. I mean, they they're saying year, yeah. quarter, month, today. I think that that's a pretty honestly like if you ask ChatGPT, it they, would, it would know that. what to do. Yeah, but it'd be more like you have a eastern region that has um, sub regions sub, yeah, and right. yeah, yeah. So you might want to do that. Yeah. yeah. That would be a good idea if that's that stuff you're, you're thinking Definitely about. Definitely is. I mean, that's something we run into with clients all the time is their hierarchies. And one of the challenges is when clients are adopting a new ERP system or have acquired a new company and now they're changing their hierarchies, you're going to have to have those right for the LM to yeah. do a good job. Right, right. And that's good. so that means like explicit hierarchies, right, that are defined inside of Power BI. So there's like, you know, there's the implicit ones when you just know that the – Northwestern region includes Seattle, <laughs> yeah. But but you might have, but in Power BI you want to physically put those fields into a hierarchy so that yeah. Power BI Copilot will be able to understand. Yeah, yeah, good. There's a there's another one here which is to make sure you have correct and consistent data types, um, and I, I think what they're talking about is is be careful that you don't have something that looks like. Uh, it might calculate but doesn't because you've got a number in one place and you've got something else that's a text column that has numbers in it and it, maybe it's not going to work. I, I, is, is that what they're getting at there? I think so. Um, you know, you definitely want to have that. I guess what Power BI Copilot might be doing is going and writing some measures. Um, honestly, I would really hope that it looks at the type of the column, you know, because if you do have, let's say you've got numbers in a column but you have one text field, that column type cannot be number. Right. Yeah. It's gonna exactly. be. It's gonna have to be text. So yeah. It would probably have to figure that out. So it's, that's probably just you know more general, um, you know, data cleanup good, good best practice. practices yeah. stuff that you that you should be doing anyway. Yeah. Speaking of data cleanup, um, you have to have consistent data in columns that require it. So let's say you have a column that has a order status. Maybe it's open, closed, on hold, or something. You've got to make sure that data is clean. But again, this is all the things you have to do to good do good reporting anyway. I mean, right. This is all, like you said, it's the old Kimball stuff is still really valid. So yeah, I mean, uh, like so something like on hold. You if you have on, o n dash h o l d and then you've got o n space h o l d, that's going to look bad in your reports anyway. So right. you want to clean that up. But you can't. You also can't reporting. aggregate on that. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Matter of fact, the the LLM, if well, depending on how Copilot's rolled out. I mean, obviously, maybe this doesn't happen, but um, you know, maybe in the future, it'd be able to figure that out. Like these are the same. I probably you know, and stick them together. But I think I think there are going to be things that just get easier and easier over time. Yeah. I think to so start too. with, you're gonna we're gonna need to give it every advantage we can. I mean, I think there's that risk of if if you don't have your data set up well and people are not getting good results, they're not going to adopt it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I've been pushing ChatGPT use in our office for 
you know, 10 months or whatever, 11 months. And uh, it's been slow uptake, but all of a sudden with ChatGPT4 and Plus and the MyGPT stuff and the being able to populate a, a, a prompt sort of behind the scenes so it knows who you are and what you care about to start with, uh, all of a sudden adoption's gone way up. And I think it's gonna be a similar thing here. Like if your data's good, adoption will be good from the start. Oh, for sure, definitely. What, are, what other key things? Let's see, so it's got key performance indicators, so it wants to have you know, obviously your KPI is defined, and again, hopefully you've already got that if you're if you're building reports. Right. That would be a good idea to put some of those in there if you don't. Yep. Um, here's one that I was not thinking about, but I think is really interesting, refresh schedules. So one thing that we put in all of our Power BI reports is a last refresh date. Yeah. But you, I can understand why that would be so important so that when you get like an answer back or a Copilot builds you a report, it can tell you like, how fresh this data is. Right. I think that's I think that's actually probably going to be an overlooked piece. Yeah. Um, but I could see it being very important. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, and I think of how we we put that freshness date on our reports. You might need to think about how to push that freshness date deeper into your data structure somehow or something. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we ha we the way we do it is we put like a table. Yeah. That's, that's called last refresh. Um, so you might have to put some metadata around like exactly what that what that table is yeah. and what to use it for. And how it gets updated. Because right. you're going to have different data sources are going to have different freshness dates and times on them. Yeah, likely. exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, well, the last two are security. Obviously, you, wanna, you want um, you know, the co-pilot to be able to figure out who should see what, I think is what they're implying here. Um, that'll be actually interesting to see how that, how they do that. You would think that the person asking the question would just have their security already applied. Like, right. why would the copilot need to know that? That'd be kind of interesting. Well, yeah, for Power, yeah, for Power BI copilot. Yeah. yeah. Um, for other LLMs, you might have to think about this though differently. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and then metadata, which we've talked about a lot. That's going to, I think that's going to be the. The most important piece is making sure that you're explaining to the LLM, whether it's Copilot or something else, what it's looking at. It's like giving it the knowledge it needs to, to do a good job. And not just like an ERD. No, uh, yeah, a yeah. relationship diagram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah interesting. Uh, it's, it's fun, exciting. Yeah, it is really, that's actually really interesting. I wonder if there's going to be companies that pop up that will gather metadata about your stuff in the right way yeah. to then, you know, use these tools with. I I'm sure. Surprised. I mean, I'm sure we'll be doing that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of our one of our things that we want to do for our clients, right? Yeah. Let's get yeah. that get, get that, that stuff wrangled just right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, good discussion. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. All right.